Ed Lolo, and welcome to the Steel Division Divisional Overview, where we take a look at every division and really just give you a general overview in how they actually work. This is a two part video. Part one is a general overview on the units within the battle group, what's good, what not, pretty standard stuff. Perhaps you're rather boring though if we just looked at units all video. So, part two is we actually watch a replay through the eyes of the division that we're looking at. And see how they actually play in game from a tactical level. Because it's one thing to build a deck. It's another thing to play it effectively. Because each deck has its different quirks that you have to master. So, for the first video, we're doing the 3rd Armoured Division for the Americans. It's a rather standard division. The main reason I'm doing this one first is I say this is one of the easiest decks to learn if you are new to the game. You've got a lot of very forgiving units. You don't have to worry on too many like high veterancy, low value stuff. And the units that you are using are rather basic. You know, you've got infantry bazookas. You've got some pretty decent fire support tanks. And you don't have to worry about more advanced units such as airplanes and I'd say anti-tank guns as well. Because they're good, but it's a bit harder to learn how to master air combat compared to just... Moving a tank over an open ground. But it doesn't mean the uh, division's bad or easy peasy. There's still quite a lot to it. So, as you can see, it's an American tank division. We've got a lot of tanks. Everything else is rather standard, but we do have not many planes or anti tank guns. A uh, point rise, you got 65 points on A phase, which is not a lot. That is hardly, hardly any points. It's the lowest A phase economy on any deck. And that may seem bad, but you get a lot of good units show in A phase, so it's not impossible. You got 105 in B phase, which is still rather low. And in C phase, a rop in 150, which is the most points you can get. So you start with the lowest and end up getting the most. It's a rather drastic progression. So let's actually take a look inside. So recon, recon, rather standard. You got scouts, which are a four-man squad. They come with an expendable jeep, and then you got recon, which are um, time three cards. They're only a two-man squad, but they come with a jeep with a machine gun. Recon's better than scouts, in all honesty. Two-man squad, a bit more, uh, I think. They're not faster, but you don't really need a four-man squad. And just having the jeep with the machine gun gives you quite a bit of extra firepower. Better to have the jeep. You get an extra two men. Now you can also get a Greyhound. And it's rather simple. You can get one times run Greyhound in A phase. A pack of twos in B phase. And pack of threes in C phase. The later you get into the game. They do lose effectiveness. Once the enemy starts bringing out proper tanks. Such as Panzer Fours and whatnot. But it's a nice light reconnaissance unit. With a decent armament. It's a bit risky to bring it out in A phase. But if you can micro it correctly. It can be a potent force. And you get scouts from B phase. And each one's actually good. Because they come with an M3 scout car. Which has a 50 cal machine gun. And 50 cal machine guns are really good. And this deck has a load of 50 cows. So rather sound to stuff from recon. Not many fighting units. Apart from the Greyhound. Infantry. Infantry is very lackluster. In general. You got army riflemen. In A phase. Now, they're pretty okay. They got semi automatic rifles and carbines instead of submachine guns. But what makes them good is two things. First, you've got a bazooka. And a bazooka is a good 200 meter range compared to 150 meter range of a Panzerfaust. Great for knocking out enemy tanks. And they also come with a half track. It does make them a bit more expensive, but the half track gives you a machine gun and because you don't have a machine gun with these army riflemen, the half track gives you yeah, extra firepower. And half tracks as well, you've got to realize, yeah, bulletproof from enemy small arms. So if you bring them up into towns and other areas, they can provide great suppressive damage. This half track, the standard uh, M3, just has a brown in 1919. You also get army leaders. Which are just your know, standard four man squad, no grenades or rocket launchers, but they do get an M3A1, and A1 does have a 50 cal, which is a rather potent weapon. But very basic in A phase, you are just going to be using army rifles, 
Just as long as you keep the half track nearby, they are a rather potent force to deal with in the semi-automatic uh, Emron Garand. Give them just a bit of extra firepower to not make them um, absolute lemons. B phase, you get engineer leaders, the arrow K, okay, nothing really amazing. You get some more army riflemen in color to six. You only end up getting engineers, they're still on the standard M3 half track. Yeah, okay, they're nine man squad. They pretty much ditch out the uh, the Garand, or the Bazooka, I mean, for a frag grenade. Frag grenade, okay, but honestly, having that Bazooka is better. And you only get them in cards of four. You do end up getting an M1917, which is a very old Road Rule Run era machine gun. It's not really good. I wouldn't recommend bringing this thing up at all because all your half tracks have machine guns on them. So you already have the machine gun firepower. And then you end up getting army like machine gun rifles. These are your anti infantry units. They only have Garand, but they have two brown and machine guns as well, which makes them rather potent at long to medium range. And they have the 50 cal half track. So overall for infantry, there's nothing really too amazing, no high veterancy. It really comes down to using half tracks and army riflemen bazookas route to win the infantry fights. Okay, for tanks, it's a, a tank division, so you got a lot of tanks available to you. And in A phase, you got his command M5 Sturridge and regular M5 Sturridge. It may be pretty tempting to get the regular M5s because you got them in packs of five. But, I'd honestly say it's better to bring up the command version. Two reasons. First up, veterancy and the leader stat makes them much more powerful. The veterancy alone just makes them really bloody good. And secondly, you're not going to have enough money to buy five M5A1 stewards during A phase. You only get 65 points during A phase. And you get 500 points to start out with. So from A to B, you have a spending money of 1,150 points. That's not enough to buy 5 times 90 M5 Stuarts. So you can get a rave just using the Command M5s. They're very much worth it. But also to support your Command M5s are some M4A1s, an actual proper medium tank in A phase. In medium tank status, it's nothing really amazing. It's just a Sherman with you know, okay gun to spatty and the Stuart, of course. But you can get it in A phase, and that is the big deal. When the Germans are mostly bringing out captured French tanks, the M4A1 Sherman rules supreme, and it's also a fantastic infantry support vehicle, which you always need during A phase. But you can only get them in a packs of run, which does make them um, a bit more of a riskier choice. B phase is where it all starts to open up. You got your command M for A1, which is the same as before, just command and extra stars. And you got the M4 A375, which is pretty similar to the M4 A1, just some slightly improved stat show of the gun and armor is a more regular sermon. They're, they're pretty good, rather mediocre, but sometimes all you need is mediocre. And afterwards, you get your two very important sermons, your hammer and your anvil. Your hammer being the M4A3 76, which has a long 76mm gun. And this gun's good because it has 13 AP and a 1,200 meter range compared to just 1,000 meter range. And this is your main anti tank tank that you're going to be using. This can knock out tigers and panthers. Somewhat effectively, you still want to get a little bit closer, preferably, to secure the kill. But it's only 180 points for your proper anti-tank gun. And you can get them in B phase, in a packs of run, if run star, and in C phase, in packs of three. Then you get to the cream of the crop. The best unit in this entire division. The Jumbo. The Jumbo is... Wicked. It's wonderful. This is the reason why this division, I think, is very good for new players. It's only 200 points, but you got 20 goddamn frontal armor. 20 frontal armor. The only thing more heavily armored is the Heinz King Tiger. And the Jumbo 
it's your regular Sherman. Shame gun, shame machine guns, nothing fancy apart from the armor. But Raytheon armor, the only things that can reliably penetrate you are Pack 43 guns, so Pack 43 AT guns, King Tigers, and Yacht Panthers. Apart from that, those Panthers, those Tigers, they can kiss your ass, because at max range, they can't kill you at all. So it is an unmovable rule, an anvil, you could say, and this is your tanky tank in this division. You bring it up to the front, it draws fire, and you laugh and have a good time. Don't get too cocky, though, because if you charge it up too much, it may get flanked, and if it gets, you know, shaken and forced to retreat, the enemy may get a good side shot while it's panicking and running away. But essentially, what you want to do is you have your jumbos in the front, they take a the fire, the 76mm Shermans flank around to try and get some kills. But in terms of jumbos, you can get one, two of them in packs of run during B phase, and then in packs of two during C phase. And I like using jumbos a lot. I always make sure to have a lot of jumbos in my deck. It is very good for having map control because they are an unmovable rule. Well, almost an unmovable rule. Okay, support. Support's rather basic. You got cheaper 50 cows. They're not bad, but they are rather exposed because it's just a cheap. You can't hide them in a forest or anything, but the 50 cow is it's a 50 cow. 50 cows are bloody amazing. You can get some supply trucks in A phase. I don't really think that's much of a use because you can get them in B phase and there's not many units that need to be resupplied in A unless your weapon gets damaged, but that's about it. You can get some M20 commands, which are highly recommended. It's a nice command unit to help support your tanks and it has a 50 cal once again. Can't go wrong with 50 cals. You can never go wrong with 50 cals. Then you got an M8 Scott, which is a nice cheap fire support vehicle, has a short 75mm howitzer and a 50 cal machine gun. Good for clearing enemy infantry inside of buildings and towns. Flamethrower squads are completely useless. A two-man squad is ready to expose. Just don't bother with flamethrower squads. B phase, you get some more cheap 50s. You get some actual supply trucks. These are the ones I'd recommend. And then some M4A3105, which is a Sherman with a 105mm cannon. This is the ultimate fire support Sherman. It does have that 1,200m range. And still all the machine guns that the Sermons benefit from. It's a good fire support vehicle. It's essentially a bigger brother on the M3A3 Scott. You can get a few from B phase and you know, two star. Don't really see the point of a two star run because you're just engaged in infantry. And a lot of them into C phase. Anti-tank is very basic. You only got three slots worth so you have to make it work. And There's only two units to pick from. You got the 57mm uh, gun, which has 11 AP, and the 76mm gun, which has 14 AP. Uh, of course, you want to have some AT guns in A phase, but once you get into B phase, you can risk it. I like getting the 2 star 76mm guns because I find the veteran tree helps out a lot because it's all about getting that first shot on those enemy panthers and whatnot. So having. You know, with a higher veterancy to increase your accuracy and rate of fire helps out a ton. But you can get a few of them. Uh, they mix in with either standard Jeep transports or half tracks. It's really down to what you want. I preferably just get them with the Jeeps. Okay, anti air. Anti air is rather basic. You got some M16s and A phase, which are 450 cows, and Bofors. Bofors are great. Uh, they're not just good for anti-air, but they have a thousand meter range and they're great at holding an open field. If you have a flank that you know the enemy, or you're expecting the enemy not to attack with a heavy tank, the Bofors can hold your open area flank, and if they bring up light armor, so it's two two twos or two three twos or half tracks, the Bofors can deal with them rather well. And because it's actually a static unit, you can hide it within a forest. It's a very nice all-round AA gun. You get some more M16s in B phase and then some M15s into B and to C. And the M15s like a movable bow force, slightly less HE on the main cannon, but you get two 50 cows as well to also shoot down enemy planes. So it's a hybrid between the M16 and the Bofors MG. 
And because most of your AA is one star veterans, they're really bloody good. Especially M15s, they will stun up enemy planes easy peasy like. And also you gotta realize, a lot of your units have 50 cal like turret machine guns on top of them. And those 50 cal machine guns can engage enemy planes, it's nothing amazing of course, but just having some extra suppressive power on a few Messerschmitts can help you win that aerial engagement. Artillery, rather basic, is a rather basic deck, as you can tell. you got some 60mm mortars and a half track, but uh, I don't really recommend them because you got the M20 run. And the M20 run is an 81mm mortar in a half track, not being carried by it. And this is a really good artillery, and it's probably one of the better A-phase mortar vehicles you can get. It's got a lot of ammunition, 60 HC and 30 smoke, so yeah, so you don't need to get the supply truck in A-phase. That's why you don't need to get it. Now if you have to go back, it's got good range, 1,200 meters, and it also has a 50 cal machine gun. So it's a, a rather expensive, just mortar piece. But it's rather self-sufficient. You don't have to really supply it during A-phase if you're not an idiot racing away ammunition. It can easily relocate to stop it getting the counter-artillery. And because it has a 50 cal machine gun, it can help shoot down planes. And if you get flanked by some infantry or hack even some light armor, it can defend itself rather well. A really good mortar, mortar piece, essentially. Uh, you can get some... Sherman OPs, which aren't exactly great. The main cannon doesn't work, it's just machine guns, but they're pretty pants. And then you got the M7 HMC, or the Priest. It's a rather standard artillery piece. It's mobile, it has 105mm cannon and 105 that shoots smoke. And anything that has smoke round, I think, is good, because smoke is bloody good. So yeah, it's rather damn standard. Once again, 50 caliber machine gun and these are your main longer range artillery they're good and then you got the calliope which i guess is the closest thing to a Berrettino in steel division it's a standard m4a3 sherman so it has 11 armor and 11 ap but it trades out the 50 cal machine gun Four bloody rockets. It has 60 rockets. It usually fires them in two salvos of 30. But if you micro it. You can make it shoot less. And they stun up everything. You want to attack a town. You rip out the Calliope. It stun up everything. And destroy a lot of stuff in that town. So you can bring up the infantry. It's a real good shocking unit. For shocking and stunning. Enemy. Infantry. Tanks. You name it. And because it's on a tank, it's also very survivable and self-sufficient. And this is really a lot of the artillery. You don't get anything that's static except for the mortars. Everything is on tracks or reels, which is pretty bloody good. does make it more expensive, though, but the ability to relocate is a, is a big bonus. And then you can get a lot of it, uh, these priests in sea phase. And you can get some more Calliopes in sea phase as well. Really, a sec does lean towards sea phase. Airplanes. You only got three slots for airplanes, so you're going to be very picky with what you bring up. You got some recon, where it's uh, okay. And then you got Rosie. Rosie is a special unit. I like Rosie a lot. It's, it's your standard recon plane, same as before, but they strap six bazookas onto it, making it an anti tank plane. Now, I've had no success using this at all, and I tried using it, but the problem is, is that it's way too slow, so one enemy fighter, or heck even bomber, will shoot you down, and those bazookas are wildly inaccurate at only one accuracy. They can fear, well, they don't, I can't actually theoretically kill a tank, unless you get some really good side shots, because it's only HE damage. But yeah, it's it's not really yeah, it's good. It's a fun little gimmicky unit if you want to have a bit of a giggle, but you only have three slots. You can't really mess around using Rosie, unfortunately. A-Phase, you got a P-38 Lightning and P-51D Mustangs. The main difference between them is Lightning is... Well, it's 
has less agility and it's slower, but it has rockets and a P-51 D Mustang is more of your standard fighter. Uh, I prefer to get P-38 in a phase as having the rockets, and it's still a rather decent fighter by itself. The 600 kilometers an hour does make it just slightly faster and most like Messerschmitt and whatnot. But if you are going to get into a dogfight, make sure to have some AA or 50 cal machine guns nearby. Be phased to get more P-38 Lightnings, more P-51 D Mustangs, and some P-47 Thunderbolts, which are some very good ground attack planes with a lot of rockets. But they are very bad for actually or dogfighting enemy planes. Interceptors is another story because they're rather fast and they got 850 cal machine guns. So if you're chasing a plane that's evacuating, the Thunderbolt's a good pick. And you can get one heavy bomber of the P-38, which has a very low speed, very bad for fight, and it really is just a heavy bomber at this point, but it drops two 450 kilogram bombs. And you get some more P-47s and some of these more P-38s. So let's just look at a deck that I built earlier, like a cooking show. Yeah, we want to discard yet. And, well, first up, all the decks I'm going to be showing in this series, completely subjective. I'm going to leave the deck code in the description below. But it's really down to you whether you like it or not. This is a general, what I think is good for maybe a new player to start out with. But yeah, just mess around. Feel free to critique it. But anyway, let me explain what I'm going for here. You just got some basic recon, MA Greyhound for some early A game harassing, and then the scouts, so you have some extra eyes and B phase, and the M3 scout's pretty good. For infantry, A phase army rifles, because you need them, and of course, you need the leader as well. And for B phase, I'm just sticking with more army rifles and the LMGs. I don't feel like I need machine guns or more LMGs for anti infantry support, as you already got half tracks, and half tracks are good enough for fighting enemy infantry. And you can just spread army rifles everywhere and just having bazooka, you know, bazookas in every forest is pretty damn good. Okay, tanks. We got the command stretch, of course, and just one M4 A1 sermon. I usually like to bring a sermon at the start of the match because that's when you get the 500 points and it's an even playing field. B phase, you got some command M4 A1, so it's for some extra command units. Uh, 176mm for, well, knocking out enemy tanks. And to Jumbo, you got to realize you don't have a great economy. In B phase, still only 105. So from B to A, from B to C phase, you only have 1,050 points to spend. And considering a Jumbo is like 20% of that, it, it's still quite an expensive unit. But goddamn, they're good. And you get reinforced more of them in C phase. Support command for command, Stuart for Scott for five sport, half, oh, not half strength, supply units for supply, and then a 105 sermon, you know, I think this is really subjective, you can just get a rave using Scott, personally. And to tank, some 57mm in A phase, and then B and C, I'm really just sticking with the highly vetted 76s. Anti-air, both fours for A, yo, I use it more for ground support, and actual anti-air, and then some M16s and B, and a lot of M15s for C to really buffing up your air defense. Artillery, mortars, and then some priests and calliopes and B, and then some more priests and calliopes. And airplanes, uh, P38 and A, just for uh, some cheap rockets for knocking out enemy anti tank guns. The P51 D Mustangs are for getting air superiority, and the P47 Thunderbolts are for actually strafing, I find, with the uh, third armored. You want to try to use your planes to get air superiority, even if it means you can't take advantage of it with bombing, because you don't want them to bomb all your tanks to hell and back. So, overall, this deck, the pros of it is you got jumbos, you got half tracks, bazooka infantry make dealing with tanks slightly more easier, and they're also good bazookas. Uh, you got fantastic late game economy, one of the best in the game, so you can pretty much outspend everybody. And this is more of a personal run, but it is beginner friendly. If you're new to the game, I highly recommend this deck. Now the cons. You have a very bad early game economy. It doesn't mean your unit's are bad, you still got those fantastic mortar half tracks and and army rifles and half tracks and a proper medium tank and fire support in A phase. It's just hard to buy all of them. 
You can still be rather aggressive. You just have to make sure you don't lose your stuff. It's very important to keep your Shermans and your M8 and other vehicles alive because they're expensive to replace. Uh, lack of armor penetration, your highest AP weapon is this thing with 14 AP. That's enough to deal with Tigers and Panthers. Some of the later Panthers will prove to be a pain in the butt, but if they bring up Yacht Panthers or King Tigers or really anything quite heavy, you will have a trouble dealing with them unless you can get a good flank or ambush. And this is a problem with a lot of American decks because you only got the 76mm guns compared to the rather powerful 17-pounder. Uh, you lack airplanes, of course, so you really have to spend your points buying as priority planes. And it's more of a subjective thing, once again. It's a bit bland. There's nothing really fancy. There's no crazy Falch Jagers or super awesome units. It's all very basic. Nothing crazy. But that doesn't mean it's bad, but if you want some extra flavour, yeah, there's other decks for you. So, with that out of the way, let's actually see how they play in battle. Alright, so this was the 1v1 that I did on Odin. I'm playing as the 3rd Armour Division, and we're up against King Papa Dragon as the 91st Lothlander. This isn't going to be a standard cast that I usually do. We're probably going to speed up certain parts, because I just want to get to important aspects of this match. So before we even get started, let's actually take a look at the map. So for the middle area, or the entire middle map, on the left we got this tree line here, blocks line of sight, the enemy's gonna get here at first, and yes, a uh, roadway with a little bit of hedgerows. Now in the middle it does look rather favourable for us as we do have this town that we can reach to first, that road down the middle which will prove to be quite useful later on. And it's flanked by some orchids, which allow you to, well, kind of hide your units. And to the right, it becomes more of a hedgerow hell with a lot of choke points and a lot of hedgerows, essentially. But you do have this open area down below. And once uh, we actually get started, I'll show you your composition. So, this is what I did. And this is what the opponent did. He sent in a lot of his stuff to the left and to the right here. It seems like really nothing into the town because, well, he can't get into that first. So let's see what's going around. So we got some infantry going into the town, of course. Uh, half tracks can be very useful in that environment. And we got a jeep going to the left here. Going to be covering that area. And the M4A1 Sherman Raven M20, and they're going to be covering that open area. When you ever get a M4A1 Sherman, I'd always recommend either having an M20 or a Stuart backing up to give it its plus two star rating. Because that plus two star rating will make it even powerful, powerfuler, and you want to make sure that it has the veteran to deal with targets because it's rather expensive. To lose it. I like using the M20 because it's cheaper. And I don't feel like I need a two tanks in the same area. I'd rather have a steward in a different location. And on the right we just have a recon unit. And we also have a Bofors gun. Uh, I didn't get a Bofors to shoot down planes. I mainly got it to hold this open area. Just against light vehicles. It's rather expensive. 400 points to do that roll. I will admit. But it's it kills everything that gets into sight. So he actually does move up some of the stuff into the town. This is a little bit late on the uh, player. And let's slow things down. And we're up against Lufflander, who does not have, well, any half tracks or many vehicles. It's a lot of infantry targets. So we will roll supreme if we manage to get into the open. We don't want to get too close, though. And that is one of the main problems in this match, is if you got too close... Panda tracks for knocking out, and Ray doesn't have any foul shakers over here, but they prove to be a rather tough customer against some army rifles. Got a little bit of suppressor fire of the Jeep, and we got the M4 in the middle, and he's just gonna easily hold the middle, shoot anything that comes in. I mean, this dude just rushes in and he just gets annihilated. I mean, a little bit risky just only getting a fire support vehicle. Which is now the anti tank, and he's just forced to hold his little side of the town. So I put most of my forces 
into the middle, hopes that I could easily hold it and then use it to tack left and right, try to branch out, essentially. And also, I didn't want to have to deal with attacking a goddamn trigger line across open ground. I'd rather just hold the open ground with machine guns, and I don't want to go through hedgerow hell on the right. I'm trying to find good spots that my Sherman can take advantage of. And in the open, the Sherman has a lot of advantageous positions. I do have the M20 over here for some reason. I was just using it to stop anything from coming down this road and along this area. I do have a Jeep 30 cal doing its thing. But yeah, Sherman, fantastic fire support unit as you can see. It doesn't need a leader because all the M20 because we have the leader in the middle. And we've got some army rifles attacking into the left. So we're already starting to move into the left hand side. I do have my mortar over here. I believe I was a little bit silly, I believe, and I allowed it to get shot at by a pack gun. But it survived because they are rather tough customers. And I'm just gonna use it to try to route out yeah, pack guns. And it, all he does is move one the inferior troopers up. And one thing it does suck is you don't really have machine gun teams. Yes, you can get the M1917 Vickers, but you, you don't want to. You really just want to stick path tracks. But in this scenario, having a Vickers in an actual proper tree line would prove to be good. Yeah, once again, it's also only a B-phase unit. So we're pushing in hard. I, I got the tanks. I got the infantry covering and essentially infantry or army rifles spots what needs to be killed and the half tracks and tanks do the actual killing aspect. And now I'm pretty much charging the M up, trying to get him to range. I get pinned down very quickly by MG34s. And here we have a B3. These things are rather deadly in the A phase. I do have a Bofors over here, which does help to knock it out. And airplanes will prove to be quite a pain in the ass for me in this match. And as third armoured in general, they can be quite a pain because you, you don't get yet many planes either. But you do have 50 cows. And as you can see, we've managed to stun that thing up rather effectively with only one proper anti-aircraft piece. But we've got to be careful here with the Sherman, because it is still only minor armour, and that thing can penetrate it if it's, what, 15, 16 armour penetration power? And I'm flanking through left with some half-tracks. I was a little bit silly and allowed this one to get popped by the uh, panzer track team. And he is mainly just using infantry, and if I keep my half track without out 250 meters of any forest, they're going to be perfectly fine. And we've got this panda track team moving up. I do just barely manage to spot it, so I, I end up reversing everyone out. And try to get the army rifles in to close the range. And the army rifles on the left. They're okay infantry, but against foul shakers they are done. Army rifles are good at 300 meter range. Fout shakers are fantastic at 300 meter range, so there's no competition. And he managed to knock out a half track, yeah, because I had it out in the open. Not really too many places to hide it. I just had some half tracks on the left to deter anyone from just rushing across. And he does finally manage to kill my Sherman with that B3. I mean, I do have the Bofors over here. But also, because you only got 65 points per tick, it's very hard to buy AA. You can get the Bofors, but it's 100 points, so it's two minutes, essentially, to afford. And the only reason I have this one out is because it I got it at the start, where it's equal. And I do lose a half-track, too. I probably could have been a bit smarter. And as he hit it, because it was slap-bang in the open. But he just had... Good air advantage. I did get a second both was up, but I unloaded it in a rather silly spot right next to the half track. It got destroyed, so it is pinned down. But I didn't bring up the both was once again to kill enemy planes. I brought it so I could slap it over here to cover the open ground. Because once again, I only have to worry about light armor against Lufflander. So instead of buying an AT gun, why don't I get a both force, which can do both things really well? for against a Lufflander deck. I mean, it does have these Panzer 35s, but uh, that's really it. And throughout the entirety of his deck, I have tank advantage by a mile. The best thing he can get is a Stug 3G. I can get Jumbos. Pretty 
self-explanatory. Uh. And then, once again, good hits for the Panzer Strikes. You have to be careful with your half tracks. You do end up getting quite careless with them because you get a lot of half tracks with army rifles. You end up just piling up and up and up. But you want to do your best to keep them alive because they are worthwhile to keep alive. I mean, just the presence alone in open ground helps a ton. And as you can see, with both oars and machine guns, they do a damn good job. It does end up bringing a 50mm mortar on the right hand side and it's just in position to knock out the both oars. I don't pay attention at all because it's on the right hand side of the map. And he's got his Panda 35 giving fire support. If my Sherman was still alive I could kill it but because it's not he's going to have free reign for a little bit. And I'm just keeping my other fire support half tracks back to just give machine gun fire. And I, I could have moved out both oars and kept it alive but alas I did not and he does have point advantages in A phase and B phase but once you get to C I do end up getting the victory in terms of points and army rifles once again they're okay against inferior troopers but once foul shakers get brought in and once again left half track too close to the forest I mean just general rule of thumb if there's a forest just Stay 250 meters, 200 meters away from it. And he does have his pack gun on the right hand side, and it does prove to be quite a nuisance because if I charge rifles across, he has HC ammunition, which can stun me up before I can get close enough. And I can't really charge half tracks either because it does get knocked out by the pack gun once again, as you can see. It takes a Big chunk out of my army rifle's health here. So, the best way to deal with it is with mortars. I do believe we end up getting one later on. We are in B phase now. I've been in B phase quite a bit. And we get the jumbo. Now, when I'm speaking about a jumbo being, like, a very forgiven unit, is replay rule exactly so right. We're playing against Lufflander. Lufflander's best AT gun, well, except for the flying plane, is the Flak 88, which does 16, 15 armor penetration damage. It can barely dent the jumbo. So, if you're not an idiot with it, you can just have it sit here and do nothing. See, he brings in a B3 to try and kill. He only, okay, he has 18 armor penetration damage, but still. If he attacks from the front, not going to do a lick of damage to the jumbo. The only way he's going to kill it is by coming around the flank. And doing that first requires micro. And two, he's going to be exposed to anti-aircraft gun longer, meaning he's going to be more inaccurate and possibly forced to retreat. So now we actually got an AA net. Well, still just run both fours, but as you can see, machine guns from 50 cows prove quite damn good just for anti-aircraft fire. And I essentially keep the jumbo in this city area for the entirety of of the match because it can't get flanked because of the buildings just as long as keep infantry in there and we've got all this open ground that we can take advantage of and shoot it out to and if they shoot me of anything it got got it's not going to do a damn lick of damage it's really the flanks that worry me a lot because there was an infantry advantageous area see he's got a nice chunk of the map here and he is getting point advantage He has the infantry advantage, and you just gotta be cool with that. I mean, I do end up getting some LMG rifles to help out, but still, Fout Shakers. Flipping unkillable, even with a half track shooting at the end. And the pack guns knocking quite a chunk out of my dudes. I do get LMG rifles on the left. I do kill the Panzer finally with the Jumbo. I do have the uh, artillery pierce here. Yeah, I tried to use to knock out the pack gun, but he's going to be smart. I lose line of sight of it at this time, so it ends up just retreating. I got an M20 command. I thought it was in a safe spot, but once the pack gun moved up, it does end up killing it. 
I even got Stuart on the right, which I was planning to use to attack over here. In hindsight, you know, it's only Inferior Troopans and a Mortar can't do much, but you never know what's hiding in those hedgerows. If I had Recon, I could probably feel a bit more safer, but I did not have Recon. And I'm just trying to pound an array of artillery. I still got the middle completely under control. Now I got the Jumbo, yeah, it's going to be very hard for him to do anything. I mean, in this spot, the Jumbo is rather weak. It could get flanked from the side with an AT gun. Well, that's not going to happen. They got Fouchagers. The Fouchagers have to get really close. And even then, the Jumbo has a stupid amount of armor. Yeah, a front shot from a Panzerfaust will hardly be enough to... I, I think it couldn't kill a Jumbo frontally unless they get a very lucky shot. I mean, you can't actually see armor penetration power, but... It's rather low. Now he starts getting some air superiority fighters. And once he actually starts getting non-big bomber planes, it does become kind of a nuisance. I do end up having to invest in anti-aircraft defenses quite a bit. The Bofors over here completely out of, or almost out of ammo. And now he's got pounded by artillery. And this is pretty funny. On the left hand side, I have these LMG rifles. And this firefight between the rifles pinned down the inferior troopers is going to last a few minutes. These, these guys have 2,000 rounds of machine gun ammunition, but they, they, they take forever to kill anything. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. They're good for suppression, of course. But you do need to get a bit closer to make them just slightly more effective. Do finally manage to kill the mortar. We have a half track, and I believe we also killed a the pack gun the other half track and here we go another b3 coming in and he's doing the right thing as Lufflander. he's trying to get air superiority he's got two of these b3s flying around and that's expensive that's 200 points each each one of these is worth one jumbo essentially and he's using it he not he knocks out my mortar half track once again and it's really starts to kick my butt into gear to afford and yeah. But now we got the right hand side clear, and you see we just got a huge swarm of half tracks moving up. And when you're doing an attack, you know, you do have a lot of half tracks. And if you have yes money, you might as well use them as your recon to slightly scout ahead. As you see, spot okay, it's an AT gun here, we got some infantry over here with this half track. And just moving up the army rifles to try and control this area. And now I'm at the plus one point advantage. And at this time we are in phase C. He brings up the big old flak 88 gun. And he's got some heavy artillery in the back. A bomber plane. And this time I actually buy myself a P-51D Mustang. And I'm not going to fly over enemy territory. He outnumbers me two to run. And I'm trying to bait him in. Because now i got the AA pieces. i got an M-15... I got an M16 over here and another M15. So it's all about trying to bait him in, bait him in and using my planes in a defensive role instead of trying to go all in because I got two P51D Mustangs, two Thunderbolts and two P38s, which is not a lot of planes. I cannot afford to lose a plane and even then I don't have stars on my Mustang. He has veterancy. I do bring up a Scott on the right hand side to provide fire support. And once again, see Jumbo? He's holding mid. He's not going to care. I'm going to attack his AT gun with a Jumbo. He can't kill it. Might as well shoot. Have a good time. And he is completely stumped in attack in the middle. There's nothing he can do to kill my Jumbo. It is slap bang. Yeah, the only way to really attack it is to flank it. And now he's starting to put a lot of pressure on the right hand side. It does have a stook. He's bringing up more inferior troopers. He's got a flak 88. Bringing up a pack 38 as well. And I do bring up a M4A1 Sherman. Just, just for a proper tank over here. Nothing crazy large. And the M15 is doing their job. Just keeping planes away. And he does have a good defensive position on left. I mean, now in hindsight, seeing this, it's 
really not that hard to attack. Just a few infantry across. Once you knock out that. Rather ridiculous pack gun. For the longest. I, I kept thinking this was some sort of pack 38. But I really should have paid attention. Because this is a pack 36. Probably going to took out Forest. But once again I didn't know. I thought it was a whole platoon wrath of foul shakers in there. And I'm trying to stay out of close quarters fighting. Because he has infantry advantage. Even with just standard grenadiers. They beat my army rifles, unless I have half tracks and fire support nearby. And reason I'm trying to attack over here is that there's less places to hide. The forests aren't as thick, so my fire support vehicles prove rather well. Then for Sherman gets knocked out, and at this time, I do get a priest. He actually spots it, and as you can see, he brings in not one, not two, but three B3s. And I'm like, oh boy. This is an absolute target shoot, and this is what I mean about using your planes defensively. I got the EA. He kills the priest, and he brings up his Messerschmitt. The Flak 88 can't shoot now because it's pinned down, and I'm using the P51D to intercept. He's has to force retreat the Messerschmitt. I only manage to kill run, and I do end up just evacing. Just killing one plane for right now is good enough for me, and this is an interesting scenario. His measure Smith beats my lightning. Just bang on beats it. Stars, stats, and everything. So, instinctive reaction is to evac immediately. Because you just want to get out of dodge. But if you evac immediately, he's probably just going to fly over here in a straight line. And he will get shot down by the measure Smith. So, I try to bait the measure Smith back into my line so my AA net can cover me. I also bring up a Calliope on the right hand side and now I fall back after getting a little bit further back now and I'm just fast enough to escape and the AA forces the message me to bugger off. The reason I got the Calliope was to kill the flat gun. Also it's a tank with rockets on top which is awesome. You can You cannot go wrong with that. And I'm just holding slow plus one point advantage. I do have extra income coming in you know, and 150 points a, a fay a turn essentially i mean that's enough to buy a sherman every turn there's a flak 88 i i tack it with the jumbo what is he gonna do penetrate me no once again jumbo he holds middle he is the king of his domain here nothing can threaten me and i could have been more offensive with the jumbo you're right but I wanted to keep it, I just wanted to play it safe. I was really focusing on attacking the right hand side. I didn't want to use this as an offensive tool, but just as a literal rule to stop him from doing any funny business into the town. Because really, I only have a few rifles in here. Nothing major, no machine gun nests, just some half tracks and AA units spread around. It's really just that jumbo hood in the town. And he brings up to a B3 and a 109. But, yeah, he's going to stun me up a bit. If I have AA, I'm not going to be too worried. Also doing the uh, rocket run. Okay, sure, bud. I go straight for the B3 because I realize that's a more powerful plane. And I do manage to pick it off and immediately evac. Don't want to get too cocky. Just knocking out one or two planes is fine. You know, I, I won't get complete air superiority where I'll be bombing everything to bits. But just as long as I can deny him his air superiority... Yeah, that's good enough, and that's really what all AA is for. And those M15s are solid anti-aircraft pieces. There you go, straight from run on the uh, Flak 88. P38 Lightning Knot, the most powerful ground attack plane. And he chased it to the Smith. And, oh, it's a fun run. P51D Mustang, I know he's going to chase out once again. He really sort of learned his lessons from the last few times, because he's just going to get stunned up. And then I bring him back round to try and intercept. And I do I get the kill on any of these planes? Yeah, I'm a far I'm like a very fast plane, so Do I kill it? Yeah, knock it out, immediately evac. Just plain defensive. And you just gotta be careful with your planes. You, could have been a bit more smarter, not trying to fly over my ANH all the time, but it worked in my advantage. And he has a Calliope firing. Just a little bit. 
I mean, you do want to use this mainly for attacking towns, but I was using this just to try to route infantry out. And a command stirrup, because why not? I don't have to worry about much armor. It's really just infantry I'm dealing with. Same with Sherman here. And so, I mean, once the left hand of dudes out in the open, my, my tanks shred away. And he brings out another Haters 129. Does have a uh, fighter's bolt. I shoot it down. I believe that's the last of his 129s. That's, that's three now. Probably only has three of them in his deck. Yeah, really just attacking on the right hand side using the open ground to the advantage really that's, that's it it's not too much else to the replay as we get to the twilight hours but to reiterate essentially for the third armor do you want to try to stay in more open areas and it really also comes down to deck to deck. In this deck, I don't have infantry advantage. Against most decks, you don't have infantry advantage. So you're very aligned from fire support. And if you get a jumbo in the right place at the right time, it will just provide an absolute brick rule. And it's a 200 point brick rule. You don't have to wait, you know, forever to get a king tiger like the Germans do. We have to take a look real fast. Like, got pretty. High kill ratio, yeah. The Sherman did a lot of work in that early phase. Definitely paid itself off. Jumbo as well as you see it. There's eight up anti-tank guns for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that's because all the anti-tank guns were rather crap. If he had a Pack 43 gun, I'd be much more cautious. But because he didn't have that many AT, you know, real any ray for me to kill my Jumbo, I didn't have to worry too much yeah just uh third armor division they're a very good deck bit bland of course and you know they don't have the most flavor but played correctly they are a flipping flipping formidable force just it's about fire support and it's about jumbos the two most important things and yeah i hope this uh video series or video per se, which taught you a few things about the third armor division. And I'm going to be doing more of these in the future. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And as usual, please just take it easy.